So who did their homework? It appears 76 times. That tells us absolutely nothing. <laughs> heave offering. It's translated as a heave offering. It's taken freely. Even though we give, the benefits we get from it are not measured in money. The gain stands in a much higher place. It is the basis for relationships and better society. So that is why it says, every man who gives it willingly shall take my offering. This is according to Parsha Truma. So what are we, what's the word we're studying, the root we're studying? Room. Okay, and what does it mean? To lift up, to exalt. Okay, we have a few more scriptures. Mizmor Kaf Zayin, Pasuk Chamesh. That's a great verse. Key. What is the root of Yitzbaneni? Safan, and what does it mean? It is the yeah, word for north. This root means north, and it also means to hide, and the idea of covering. Because the things that come from the north, look, you see where Israel is on the map. Every bad thing that happens comes from the north. Okay, they're always being attacked from people by the north. It's not exactly secret, but it is hidden. Uh, the other place where you see this uh, as a verb for cover is where they're covering everything in gold. You hammer it real thin and it, it, uh, it adheres like, like cling wrap oh. <laughs> to everything, right? You know that very thin gold will do that, gold leaf. It just sticks to the thing. So it's covering, everything is covered in gold and it also comes from this root. So what do you think is happening here? Who is hiding who? Yahweh is hiding me. And where is he hiding me? In his sukkah. Yahweh has a sukkah. That's great. Okay, a sukkah is a place with a covering. When? Biyom ra'ah, in the day of evil. Yistereni, here's a setter. What's setor? It's another hiding. That's a secret kind of a hiding. And where is it? The setter of Ahalo, of his tent. He has a secret place of his tent, and he'll hide you in that place. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know what this looks like, but I know it's true that you can be hidden Oh, and Paul says that, right? I am hidden with in God, right? I'm hidden with Messiah in God, okay? You can be hiding. And then also, but Sur, in, in his rock, Yeroma Mendi, he will lift me up, he will exalt me, uh, he will set me high upon a rock. So you can be hiding in a, in a hiding place, but if you're way up where nobody can reach you, it's not like you're hiding, but you're still a safe place. God will lift you up. I think we know a song about that, probably. Mizmor Lamidalin, Asuk Arba, I hope. God Lu, Gadol. To make great. It's not really two. It just takes a preposition. We wouldn't say a preposition. Yahweh Iti, with me. Neromimma. So who is it for? The nun tells you who is it for? We, we will exalt Shemo. Yachdav. Together. Let us exalt his name together. So this is a part of the, um, the Torah service on Shabbat after they take the Torah scroll out of the ark and they bow down everybody together and they, then they sing this verse. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Yeshayahu. Vav. Pash. Pasuk harishon. What is this? Shnat mot. The year of his death, right? It's smichut. In the year of his death, who's dying, Melech Uziyahu. And something happens to Oza, uh, uh, Yeshayahu. Er, eh, et. Oh, look, it says Adonai. It's part of scripture. Okay, nobody went through and erased all the Yehovahs and wrote Adonai over them. Okay, it's 400 times it appears. Yeshev al Kise, sitting on his throne. It's present tense, right? Participle Yeshev, he is. He's still sitting there. Even since uh, Yeshayahu saw him, he's still sitting there. Ram Venisa, we talked about it, what does it mean? High and lifted up. High and lifted up. Ram Venisa. <laughs> okay, you see it together. Shulav, uh, Shulav you don't know, it's, it's uh, the train. You know, not the choo-choo train that's outside, but the train of his robe. Okay, and you know it. Malayim, it's filling the temple, the Hechal. Hechal is a word... Uh, it means palace. It can be the palace of the king. But when it's talking about Adonai, it's translated as to high and lifted up. Ram Venisa. One more. Mishle. Also Vav. Pasuk Esrei. These are beginning a list of abominations. All right. 
Enayim Ramot. So this is the Ram. So what is it talking about? Haughty eyes. Okay, so in this case, it's not exalted. They're just lifted up, looking up. What is uh, the plural for Ayin? Enayim, it's a dual. But what gender is it? Feminine. That's why it's Ramot. Okay, your body parts in dual. They come with the dual ending, but, the, but they are feminine. Lashon Shaker, you should know. Lying tongue. Yadayim. Aha Shofchot. That are pouring out. What? Damnaki. Innocent blood. It's innocent blood. Again, it's Yadayim, dual. Shofchot is a, is a uh, participle. But what is it? It's in the feminine plural. I think that's, we've done a lot about Ram, room, right, to be lifted up, to be exalted, referring to exalting people or, you know, saying nice things about the king or about the king of the universe or just something that's lifted up. Now, we're on verse 2 of Psalm 99. We're going to finish it above all the pieces. He's lifted up above all the nations, okay? Yo do. It is like ho do. Well, or you can use it as praise, either one. Okay. Nora is more than wonderful. Terrible. Awesome, right? Not like, uh, you know, every teenager on the street. Oh, that's just awesome. This is really awesome, inspiring all. That is the nature of God. All right, verse 4. Ve'oz melech mishpat ahev. So well, that's an interesting kind of construction there. What, what do you make out of that? Strength, uh-huh. King's strength. What's a verb? I have, which means justice, judgment, judgment. But the king's strength, we would say the king loves justice. What does it mean if the king's strength loves justice? I'm not really sure. His aid. His, aid, yeah. his helpers. Ata konanta me sharim. So ata we know. Konanta, uh, actually I think uh, this is the root. But you know the word kin. It means yes, but it has to do with being established. You have established yashar. You have established straightness. It's not, it's not justice. It's um, equity. Fairness. Okay, that's good. Fairness. Equity is fairness, right? Equity doesn't mean equality. Equity is not equality, right? According to Torah, what is equity according to Torah? Mishpat utzidaka. This is the same mishpat, and sedaka is righteousness. Be Yaakov in Jacob, in other words, in the people group. But ata asita, you did it. Okay, you made it. Who? Yahweh. Okay, he is establishing those things. Okay, according to his sense of, of uh, equity. So this is the Romamu. Eloheinu. V'hishtachavu. What is hishtachavu? To bow down, to prostrate oneself in worship. It's a miserable verb, and we're going to do a hundred examples. Get a verb, verb sheet. This is a verb sheet. So the root is shacha. Jessica's question is about sacha, which is with a sin, and it's in modern Hebrew, and it means to swim, but it's quite regular. Sacha, sacha, sachin, sachot. This is nothing like that. I'm sorry. So we're going to go through and... Uh, you know, the e-sword has a, a wonderful capability that if you go, I forget which one of the dictionaries it is in, but it'll show you all the forms that the root appears. So I just went through and I pulled out an example of every form that it appears. And we'll figure, don't, don't write anything on your paper till you figure out where to write it. Breshit, Yudchet, Pasuk Shtayim. The only thing, I think, for this verb and noten are the most confusing ones, but no ten is quite easy because it's small. The problem with this is what binyan is it? Hit pa'el. It's hit pa'el. It appears in a few cases in Hefeel. It does. Okay. Ve'yisa ina from Nasa. He lifted up his eyes. Ve'yar. Ve'hine. Behold. Shlasha anashim. Three men. Nitzavim alav. Standing on him. No. On him? Standing what? Maybe before him or by him. Vyar, he keeps see, he, he keeps seeing it, right? Vyarat lekratam, he ran lekratam to call to call them mipetach oehel from the opening of the tent by yishtachu. So here's the form. It's yishtachu. So what form is that? 
Okay. So what happens, remember, in the hit pa'el, here's the, here's the root. Okay, we tend to lose the hay at the end. That's, that's uh, pretty normal. Remember, you have the, the uh, transposition. It's not yit shahu, but the, the tav moves from this position to this position. But this is a very odd ending, ooh. But we know who it's written for. Who is it written for? Abraham. So this is a third person, masculine, singular, what tense? It's future. It's got a vav, and that reverses it. But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about how to decline the verb. No, conjugate. Decline is for nouns. So it is an imperfect. Yishtahu. Third person. It looks a little weird because of the u at the end. We're not expecting any u. Bereshit kafet pasuk chamesh. Okay, you know the story of Genesis 22. Vayomer Abraham el Na'arav, who is he speaking to? His Na'ar, his young men that he takes with him. Shvu lachem po, sit yourselves here. So uh, actually there's several languages where sitting is reflexive. It's, it's reflexive in Russian, it's reflexive in Spanish, so it's not uncommon. Sit yourself down. You know, we have to say it in English like that, sit yourself down. And what are they with? The chamor, the donkey. The Aniva Hanahar, his young man, okay, he's talking about Isaac, Nelcha Atko, we will go until whatever that is over there, where they're going. Nishtachave is your verb. We're going to worship Vinashuva Alechem, and we'll come back to you. So this is Nishtachave, so it's got this odd vav ending on it, which we wouldn't expect. And so who is this for? We. First person, plural, and what uh, tense is it? Imperfect. So we see this odd formation, nishtachaveh. Kaf dalin, rishit, kaf dalin, pasuk arba'im v'shmona. Good, so you know this story is 24, he's off getting the bride, right? And now this is maybe the 10th time he's telling the story. <laughs> Ekod. So this also means to put your head on the ground, a bow down. Kadkod is another word for... Head. And here's your form, eshtachaveh. So who is this for? First person singular. But it's got that same cute ending on it. First person singular imperfect. Eshtachaveh. So he's bowing down and worshiping. And what else is happening here? Avarech et Yahweh. I am blessing Yahweh Elohe Adoni Avraham, the God of my master, my Lord Abraham. Asher, hin chani vaderech emet, who uh, led me on the way of truth, and the right way, lakacha, to take. Bat achi adoni, it's a, it's, it's a double smichut. Bat achi adoni, the daughter of, the brother of my Lord for his son. So ach, remember, is a word that in smichut, it always carries the yud. So it's not uh, ordinarily a masculine singular. We would not expect to have anything on there, the, son, the brother of somebody. We would we'd just expect, oh, ach Yosef, but it's not. It's achi. It carries it like um, the prepositions, el and al. They always carry a yud with them. Av also, my father is avi, but his father is na. Aviv, not avo. Okay, his brother is achiv, not acho. All right, so that's eshtachaveh. Moving right along. Lamed gimel, bereshit lamed gimel, pasuk shesh. So what is nagash? How can you remember nagash? Yes, to come near. Nagash. It's the name for the land of Goshen, where they drew near. So they drew near who? The shvachot. No, the handmaidens. This is, um, you know, Jacob is bringing his family along bit by bit to meet Esau. Henna to there, the Yaldei Hen and their, their Yaladim, their children. The Tishtachavena. Tishtachavena. So yeah, this is a bit unusual. Uh, we're used to seeing this ending, a nun and a hey, but you will see nun Sophie occasionally takes a vowel and it looks like this. And so what, for, what form is this for? They bow down, good. For, for feminine, right, it's second or third person, plural. And what tense is it? Imperfect, right? This is, this is very common. This is very common 
where we see a singular singular verb, Vayeda Be'er Moshe Ve'aharon, and we get the, the other rest of the noun is not included in the verb. Very common. But they're, they're all up, all the little kids are up under the ladies there. Believe me, those kids saw Esau coming. They bowed down. 400 men, right? Shemot, Kaf. What is chapter Shemot, Kaf about? Ten Commandments, good. Pasuk Chamesh. Lo tish tachaveh. Do not bow down. Okay, and who is it for right here? It is you. Is it plural? It's a singular. It's a second person masculine singular imperfect. Okay, we haven't got to the plural. Listen, this is very important. The commandments are written to each individual person. They're not written to a big group of people. Right? They're for you and you and you and you and you. Singular. <laughs> they had one. You know, it didn't work out. The thing with the one commandment, it didn't work out well. Velo ta'avdim. It's not ta'avu. All y'all is you. Ta'avod. What's the M at the end? Them. What are we talking about? Idols. Ki anochi Yahweh Elohecha. I'm Yahweh your God. El Kana. A jealous God. Poked avon avot. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers albanim. On the sons. And then you have an odd phrase. Al shleshim v'ad ribeim. So you can see the shalosh and you can see the arba in there. Right until the third and fourth. It doesn't say what they are. It just says until the third and fourth. It's translated generations. Your little generations will be in italics. Le son I. What is sonet? Hate. The haters of me. Okay, don't hate God. You curse your generations for at least three or four generations. Shemot kafdalen. So here's an example, just of what you're talking about. What is the verb alay? What is that for? To go up. But but how many people is it for? It's for Moshe. And then all of a sudden, all these slew people going with him. Aaron, Natav, Avihu, Shivim. How much is Shivim? Zikne Yisrael. But the verb is singular. Vehishtachavitem. So here's your verb. Tem ending is not third person, is it? Second person, plural. What tense is it? Perfect. In a perfect hit pa'el, you're going to have the hay the, the in the top. They're separated, but that will be the hit pa'el part. Okay? It's very common for verbs that end in hay to have this e in them instead of the hay, right? How do you say? I made. Asiti, I built. Baniti, I saw. Okay, those are all things that end in hay. And so we very commonly have that uh, yud in there. So that looks almost a modicum of normal, except for the vav. I don't understand the vav. <laughs> and worship me rachok from, from afar. Vayikra uh, kaf vav. Pasuka rishon. Okay, now you have some commandments that are in plural. Lota asulechim. Don't make for yourself elilim. Elilim are idols. Okay, sometimes... Uh, it can just refer to those things which consider themselves to be gods but are not. Okay, false gods, it could just be that. Peso is specifically a carved image. A matseva we had last week, what was it? Standing stone. Lo takimu, do not, do not set it up, do not erect it. Lachem. Ve'even maskit. So uh, this is a, uh, an, engraved, an engraved stone. Lo teach new. Remember, we talked about la tet. It doesn't mean just to give. What does it mean? To set in place. Ba'artachem. In your land. La hishtachavot. So what form is this? The infinitive. So you have to watch out how you read it. Let's put all the vowels in so we can do it right. So this is the infinitive form. Construct infinitive. That means it has a lamet in front of it. La hishtacha. When you get to the vav, then, because the chet has a vowel, so then the vav must be a consonant, and his vowel is up here. The hishtacha vot is the infinitive. All right, let's see if we can cram in one more here. Dvarim kaf vav, pasuk eser. How do you say before me? No, there is no lif me ever. Lifanai. Okay, it always carries a yud with it, so when it comes to the, the singular, First person, it's I, Lefanai. Okay? Ata, now, Hine, behold, Heveti et Rashid Priha Adama. I have brought the first fruits 
of the land. Very good. Asher natata li, which you gave me, Yehovah. You gave me this stuff. Now I'm going to give it back to you. Behinachto. This is from Noah, but it's he feels. I'm causing it to rest. The O at the end is it. What is it? The reshit, or the pre. Before Yehovah, Elohecha. Before Yahweh your God. Vehishtachavita. Here's your, here's your verb. Who is this for? Second person, masculine, singular, perfect. It's got a ta ending on it. You know the ta ending. It's not hard to figure out. It's just got that weird bob in it. Okay, so far... Oh, wait, let's finish the verb. Oh, oh okay, we did. Finish. Lifnei Yehovah Elohecha before Yahweh your God. Okay? So, so far, the only thing that is, that is quite weird is this third person because it's got an U on it. And we don't expect, and it's not Yishtachaveh, like Tishtachaveh, or Nishtachaveh, or Eshtachaveh. It's Yishtachu. And the Vav becomes a Shuru. Okay? I think so we're, um, we're just about half done with these. So we'll finish them next week and we'll finish the Psalm. Okay, but this is good. You need, you need verb sheet work. Don't you? Yes, we do.